Okay, so let's start with the anatomy of the nose and some of the physiology as well, some of the things that it, it does for us as far as breathing is concerned. So if we start right from the front, so let's start with this structure here. So this is the frontal sinus. Now there's more than just one sinus in the face. Um, we've also got the sphenoid sinus. We have the ethmoid sinus. And I say sinus, should be sinuses because most of these are paired. And the, oops, excuse me, and the maxilla sinus. Um, and the functions of these um, is A, to lighten the skull bones, so they're full of air. So lighten the skull bones. And also, um, one of the other functions is they serve as resonating chambers for speech. So very much involved in that. Now one of the main problems with the sinuses is that they all drain into the nasal cavity. So if they become blocked, then sinusitis can result. So it could cause sinusitis. So they all drain into that area there. So that's the sinuses. So next we need to talk about the nose. And the nose has two parts to it really. We've got the internal nose and the external nose. So if we talk about the external nose first. Okay, so the external nose is really, we're talking about this area here. And it's, it's really the area that's visible um, from the outside. Um, and the external nose is a framework of bone and hyaline cartilage. Um, and it's covered with muscle and skin and that's lined by a mucous membrane um, on the inside. Uh, the bridge and the bridge is the bridge is this area here. So that's the hard bit of the nose at the top. So the bridge um, is formed by the nasal bones. So bridge formed by nasal bones. And this is, uh, this is holding it in a fixed position. The rest of the nose, so the rest of the nose, um, and we're talking again about this area here, so this is now formed from pliable cartilage um, and gives more flexibility. So that's the bit of the nose that you can kind of wiggle if you like. And then on the underside of the nose, on the underside of the nose here, we have got two openings which are called the nares or nostrils okay um, and then another area to mention which is just inside the nose if I just get rid of these just inside the nose is this area here and that's known as the vestibule and that's the anterior part, so the front part of this area here, um, which is the nasal cavity. And this is surrounded by cartilage as well. So then let's move on to talk about the internal nose. And when I'm talking about the internal nose, we're talking mainly about the nasal cavity. And the nasal cavity is this area here. So the internal 
nose. And the internal nose is a large cavity and it's inferior to the cranium. So it's below the cranium and it's superior to the mouth. So you've got the mouth down here. So it's below the cranium and it's above the mouth. Uh, anteriorly, the nose merges with the external nose. So here the internal nose merges with the external nose and posteriorly it communicates with the pharynx so we've got the pharynx down here so it communicates here and here and is below the cranium and above the mouth so we need to quickly talk about the functions of the nose as it relates to uh, respiratory function so the main function, well, the three main functions, okay? So it warms, it moistens, and it filters the air that comes through. So the vestibule so remember this area here, the vestibule is lined with hairs. Lined with cilia. And these filter out large dust particles, so it acts as a filter. Air then passes from here into the upper nasal cavity and from this three projections extend outwards and these are called nasal conchi. So you can kind of see them on this diagram here. So this is one, this is two and there's three of these in total. So these are the known as the nasal conchi which create a series of groove like passages so you can see here these grooves that it creates inside the nose um, and these are also um, have a lining of mucus so we have grooves formed by conchi and mucus membranes and these mucus membranes contain capillaries and epithelial cells with many cilia and goblet cells so the mucus membrane um, has got cilia and goblet cells So the goblet cells create mucus. Which moistens the air and traps dust particles. So traps dust. And the cilia, their action is to waft this backwards to pharynx so they send it down here and as a consequence it's either swallowed we swallow a lot of mucus during the day or alternatively it's spat out so that's the nose that's its structure and its function as related to our respiratory system.